I am the program director for the Italy program. So welcome to my presentation on Tuscany and Umbria. I'll be discussing a few topics with why to choose Tuscany and why to choose Umbria, where do we stay and why untours. So let's unpack, settle in and get ready to explore the winding cobblestone streets of your town. Imagine if you will, that you are sitting in a cozy cafe planning the trips to the next small hill towns, hilltop towns that you want to visit while in Tuscany or Umbria. So again, my name is Amber Martin and I started at Untours this past September in 2021. But previous to my time with Untours, I lived in Italy for about a year and a half. I've spent a lot of time in Tuscany and Umbria more than probably anywhere else. And I've actually done seven visits to Italy since 2009. I studied um, art, high Renaissance art history in Tuscany and Umbria, which is fantastic because so many of these small towns and churches have so much of the high Renaissance artwork that doing the classes on site are just fantastic. So one of the things I got to do recently is this past November, Untour sent me to all six regions of Italy to explore each of the destinations that we have and to be able to sort of live the way that an untourist would live for a week. So I was able to drive by myself through Umbria and Tuscany with a stick shift manual car and direct myself between our properties and go to a bunch of the different destinations. And honestly, out of all the times I've been to Tuscany and Umbria, which has been seven times each, I have never experienced it the same way I did while having a car. Because going by train is nice, but being able to go to all these different places is incredible if you get to decide where your itinerary is. So what I wanna do now is highlight some of the key features of what is best about these programs and why Untours is one, in one of these locations is the best way to see the regions. So Tuscany's up first. There are several reasons why you should go to Tuscany and why it's one of the most sought after destinations in Italy. Tuscany is filled to the brim with stunning sights. It's also an inspiration for so many of the high Renaissance artists because Tuscany itself is actually the birthplace of the Renaissance as well as the Italian language. So places, people were born in Italy, such as iconic Italian figures like Dante, uh, Leonardo da Vinci, and Michelangelo. Uh, famous rolling hills in Tuscany lined with the cypress trees are speckled with many towns throughout, and each of have their own traditions, good food, great wine, and beautiful architecture to make you want to come back for more. The most, most of you are probably aware, but Tuscany is very well known worldwide for their fine wines. One of the most important wines in Tuscany is Brunello di Montalcino. And this red wine was actually created in the heart of Montalcino, which is one of the home bases that we have in Tuscany on tours. So Montalcino itself, which you can see part of it in the background here, this is actually a photo from our Piazza uh, apartment in Montalcino itself. And this shows medieval architecture. It has a great art history background. And of course, it produces the famous Brunello wines in the hillsides. Montal Montalcino streets itself are lined with wine bars. So the main street, when you walk down through, you can go through and do tastings. But they also have a greater variety of cafes, antique shops, and world-renowned award-winning restaurants. Uh, surrounded on the hillsides are the vineyards and the olive groves that help make this a paradise of food and wine and an ideal place to basically kick back and relax between visiting the surrounding towns during your untours. So our apartments itself offer a, the best experience in Tuscany by offering a convenient home base where you can explore and venture to the surrounding towns, each by offering their each uh, slice of paradise. So for instance here, this is the Angela apartment. These are photos I took this past November while I was visiting. So when you're living and looking out these windows here, the view to the right is the doorway that is the scene that you'd be looking at outside of your window. Speaking of food as well, Tuscany is a gourmet paradise. So the food in Tuscany is often named the best in the whole of Italy. From fine dining to street food, it has everything you could think of. The nutrient-rich soil means the produce itself grows with intense flavors that are reflected in the dishes and they can offer often produce a lighter fare with the selection of different produces, tomatoes and that such. 
Personally, I feel like the tomatoes in Italy taste like pure sunshine. They are unlike what tomatoes taste like in America, America personally. And I look forward every time we're going back to Italy to, to taste the tomatoes. And their olive groves, cheeses, and hams are some of the ingredients in their famous Tuscan dishes. So of course you wanna also try in your fair share of gelato as well when you're in Tuscany. So a good time to go would be during the spring as it offers a vibrant greenery and fields filled with blooming wildflowers in these rolling hills. You can also expect highs in the upper 70s and lows in the 60s. Don't be surprised though if there's an occasional spring shower. So we always encourage everybody to pack a light coat or bring an umbrella, but for the most part you'll find that the climate is very nice in the spring. Also, if you find that the only time of year that you can escape the States and go over to Italy is during the summer months, Italy is the place you wanna go. So we actually offer bookings in, in Tuscany during the late March through late October all year. That way, um, compared to some of our other destinations, we have a tendency to have a break during the summertime, but Tuscany is a great place because of these little uh, niches where you have cooler weather in the mountaintops, you can still enjoy a summer in Tuscany. And then also in the, in the fall time is a great time to go too, because it's considered less of a high season. It's like less people are there during that time. So you can expect lows in the 50s and higher temperatures in the 70s. And so sometimes it can be a little cooler in the mountaintop ranges. But that doesn't mean that fall isn't a great time to go to Tuscany. Harvest festivals are popping up all over the region all fall, making the fall particular time to go it, for food and wine enthusiasts to visit. We also offer an option, what's called the Food and Wine Week during October 12th. So we offer an itinerary during that week. It's one of our only events that we offer in Tuscany currently for the week. And you would be able to do truffle hunting and tasting. You'd be cook, doing a cooking lesson with wine tasting, a winery tour, and you'd be able to still have time to explore the areas of Tuscany in between the areas that we have booked for you. While ex out exploring, one of the locations I would recommend you look into going is Pienza, which is one of my personal favorites in all of Tuscany. This here is a photo of the landscape of Pienza. If anybody's watched the movie Gladiator, it may look familiar because the final scenes of Gladiator were actually filmed in Pienza. And so Pienza itself is a town outside of Siena, situated between Montepulciano and Montalcino, it's actually listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1996, so it is protected. Pienza itself has a main street and a square, but a lot of times the prettiest corners of this town is found on the side streets right off the main street. Here's where you can find small cute piazzas and cafes, gorgeous balconies filled to the brim with flowers and greenery. And at, uh, while you're exploring the, the town, you can also catch stunning and unexpected views through the archways to the valley below. And of course, we cannot forget about cheese. So if anybody's a cheese fan like I am, and unfortunately, you know, lactose intolerance has taken over over time, but I find that in Italy, uh, the cheeses there are just unlike anywhere else. And so you wanna make sure to take your time in uh, Pienza to taste the specialty. So Pecorino di Pienza is a type of mature sheep's cheese that's offered in Pienza, and it's one of the highly regarded products in that area. So a lot of times you can walk to, uh, shop to shop and find little samples, but you can also order a formaggio board, which is a cheese board at one of the local ristorantes. Whether you're thinking of heading to Tuscany for wine, food, or the history within the hills, you can relax knowing that we have a local person on site named Tracy, who is only a phone call away. This is just one of the many reasons that we have on tours as a perfect destination in Tuscany. And we want to obviously transition also to Umbria. So Tuscany itself may be known for as the wine country and more of the manicured hillsides. Umbria itself is known as Italy's green heart. It doesn't translate as well in English, but it's beautiful. Um, basically the reason they call it that is that there's an abundance of woodlands, meadows, and pastures. And it's the only re region of all of Italy where it doesn't have a coastline and it doesn't border any other country. So if you ever see the green heart of Umbria, that's why. This is also a photo I took this past November where I was able to go out into the, the fields in the 
uh, olive groves and actually witness some of the harvesting. So this is some of the local olives getting ready to go into processing to make the olive oil on one of our agriturismo or the working farms that we have uh, apartments at in Umbria. So Umbria is one of the regions in Italy where there's still very few tourists compared to other regions. You get to truly exist at your own pace and experience the Umbrian people the way that they live. So you get to get lost in the warm, welcoming and friendly medieval towns featuring a lot of outdoor activities and some of the best food and wine you can be found in the entire country. Whereas the landscape in Tuscany is more of gentle rolling hills, Umbria landscape is more dramatic and has paths cut through the mountains. Within the peaks and valleys though is where you'll find quaint, quiet and small beautiful towns where each one offers its own unique views for their visitors. As before, our apartments in, on tours offer one of the best ways to experience Umbria because it offers that home base close to where all of the surrounding towns are and puts you close to the culture and history without putting you in the heart necessarily. That way, whenever you wanna go off and go to different locations around Umbria, you have a convenient location you can come back to and rest. Or if you just wanna take a day off and go and enjoy walking around in a, an olive grove or go down the street and discover something that you didn't even know it was there, it allows you that capability. Here is the Sarah apartment that we have offered on our website, which is one of the locations that I stayed at in, during my trip this last November. So springtime offers blooming wildflowers and songbirds that are happily making their nests in all of these treetops in the ridges. The warming breeze is also a great way to adventure between the different regions. You can expect the highs to be in the upper 60s through the lower 70s, and then the lows in the 50s. Autumn is also very similar in temperature to Tuscany with the lows in the high 50s, and then the highs in the low mid to mid 70s. And sometimes you'll have cooler weather in the top of the mountains. You'll often in the fall experience wood burning stoves. So you produce uh, this hearty smell of just the, the food cooking over the open fires and it's extremely alluring. And so this is a great time to be able to explore the countryside. And they also search for the coveted black diamonds of Umbria, which people may know of as black truffles. So truffle hunting itself in Umbria is an age old tradition. Crowley, the region is consistent with the highest quantity as well as quality of black truffles in all of Italy. Historically, pigs originally were the ones that would sniff out the truffles, but today you'll mostly count on seeing pe people use dogs, such in the picture in the upper right hand corner, because the pigs were more likely to gobble up the, the precious gems compared to a dog is trained not to eat them. So this is a photo of some of our untourists back in 2018 with the dog as well as the person leading the trip during the food and wine trip in October 2018. The photo to the left is actually my plate of the uh, pasta that I had in Umbria this past November with the sliced fresh truffles that we, they were harvesting while I was there in November. So Umbria is also known for its abundance of meat dishes, particularly pork and lamb and a variety of different game. And each tend to be gr grilled over the fire or cooked on a spit with abundance of herbs. Olive oil produced in Umbria is also known for the quality rather than quantity. And you can often stop at local stands and shops along the road for the olive oil tastings across the region. I actually brought home a liter of the olive oil from the farm I stayed at. And my fiance and his daughter fell absolutely love because the, the olive oil in Umbria tends to be spicier at nature. And so at this point they are convinced they need to go back and try it in person. So any visit to Umbria isn't complete without a stop in Assisi, which is also known as the city of peace and the birthplace of St. Francis, which is also the patron saint of animals. So the city is one of the leading destinations for pilgrims every year, but you actually don't need to be religious to enjoy this picture perfect postcard of a town. Sitting on the hilltops overlooking Umbria is Assisi, which is one of the most preserved medieval towns in the world. Assisi isn't just home to UNESCO World Heritage Sites, the entire city itself is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So it, Assisi it basks in this esteemed status, which was awarded due to the number of historically significant buildings, stunning landscape, and the countless works of art located within the buildings in Assisi. Other than Assisi, there's a plethora of other hilltop gems to be discovered. When you walk through the gates of some of these smaller towns, 
often that you'll find you're not just the only visitor. Sometimes you're literally the only person in the entire town. Some of these towns have dated back so far that you can't even imagine the history that have taken place in some of these hilltop uh, gems. I mean, these, the Assisi itself, when I visited, was one of the most stunning places that I've ever seen because the valley that's underneath it tends to have a cloud cover. So if you're dur there during the sunset, the, the birds and the pigeons that fly over the valley, you just feel like you're actually in a dream. So I just, when I have to think of a happy place in Umbria, I tend to think of Assisi. One of my other personal favorites that I visited this last fall was the town of Spello. Located at the doorsteps of Assisi, it's a small town that you can actually explore on foot with just to, in, within a couple hours. Spello is an ancient walled city that is located right down the slope from St. Francis's Mountains within, you know, very close to Assisi. Uh, it's classified as one of the most village, beautiful villages in all of Italy. So when you step foot in this town, you'll be able to transport back into middle, medieval times where these honey colored houses are covered with ter terracotta roof tiles and they have beautiful cobbled pathways throughout. The best thing you can honestly do is to find a local restaurant, coffee bar, order a glass of the local wine and just sit down and revel in the experiences you're having at that time. In Umbria, time seems to stand still. And so you wanna enjoy these times and just you know, have something to think back on when you go home. Personally, Umbria is one of my personal favorite destinations throughout all of Italy not for one or two specific sites or events. I think it just comes down to the simple way of life and truly enjoying the moments that you get to spend in this you know, historical landscape. Once you visit it, Umbria definitely tends to leave a mark on you and you'll be left dreaming of the experiences of visiting Umbria for years to come. This is actually a photo I got to take, which is also my background. Um, this was, the tree that is over top of me here is actually a 500 year old, old uh, olive tree. And my on-site host thought it was absolutely fascinating that I wanted to, to hug these olive trees because these trees were alive at the same time as play, people like Michelangelo and Bernini. And as an artist, I just found that these living works of art are still something that sort of go unappreciated, especially by different people that visit. And she was just absolutely fascinated that I wanted to go see all these old trees while I was in Umbria. So you may be asking now why you wanna go with Untours. So we know Italy. Since 1975, we've been finding the best apartments in Europe, scoping out most appealing locations in either the region or the city that you'll be in, signing accommodations that meet rigorous standards, and cultivating relationships with the local hosts. In Tuscany itself, it's the first place we actually established an untour. And so some of these relationships we have go back decades with the owners. So untours packages include a, an apartment, local transportation, transfer assistance, as well as helpful planning information and on-site services with knowledgeable staff. The apartments itself give you extra lounging space, local character, and more authentic places to be in. You get a full working kitchen while you're there, so you can prepare local meals with the fresh produce and the ingredients from the surrounding areas. So both in Tuscany and Umbria, you can go down to the local market, purchase your freshly made pasta or your you know, tomatoes and ingredients and make a dish there that is just sometimes almost better than you can get in some restaurants in the US. Apartments themselves can be especially good values for families and couples that are traveling together. Plus for Tuscany and Umbria, the placement allow where we have our apartments allow for travel by car to local shopping and dining, which is also excellent for sightseeing and day trips because we give you that home base that you can return to in the evenings. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna actually walk through one of our apartments in Tuscany. So I can give you a good walkthrough of how our website works. We did this during the last Amolfi presentation and we found it does help because some people um, just have like to walk through and see what all our key features are that may be hidden if you haven't been on our site uh, in depth. So the, the Italy page here is for Tuscany. And so you can do that by visiting untours.com slash Tuscany. And the same goes for all of our destinations. So you can come down through here and select any place that you're interested in going. So when it lands on this main page, we have a three-step process. First, you're gonna select the number of travelers. And here we have a dropdown. So you can travel if you're going by yourself or if you're going with eight people, you can come through and select this here. So I'm gonna go ahead and select two 
because for the most part, that is our most frequented package is with two people. So what I will do is come down and say, I wanna to go to Tuscany next May in 2023. What you can also do is say you have a range of dates and you wanna look at April, May, and June. What it'll do is it'll actually, you can select multiples and it'll pull up the date ranges that are currently available on our site and what the prices are for one or two weeks. So what we'll do is we're gonna select April 19th, we'll go for one week with two people. Then what you'll see is all the properties pop up. It will also tell you what's included, but that is also located on the each property page. So what we'll do is we'll scroll down here and let's say we wanna to go to the LC Salvia. So what you'll do is click directly on the name. It'll pop up the actual apartment listing. You'll see photos that will be slide showing through here. It'll show all the key features of the apartments themselves and a description that's written by the staff. So for instance, I will go through and review after I visited, you know, I could go through and do an update. Um, also, you'll find the property details, which is the main part that shows all of the perks, basically for the level, the accessibility, key features, pluses and minuses. And so you can review that, find out if it's something that is interesting to you. It also fits, for instance, this apartment shows that it sleeps one to four people. What you'll do is also, as I said before, what's included, it goes through and outlines all of that information. Also, you have information on the village. So this is in the town outside of Montalcino. So it'll show you all of the information. It'll slide show through some photos of the closest village that is associated with the apartment. And also one of the neat things is when you go on an untour and you leave a review on one of the, the post surveys, when you go do the questionnaire, we pull quotes from there about the apartments and be able to put them in here uh, on each listing. That way you get actual words from directly from the mouths of untourists that know the experience of living in that apartment during that week, two weeks, three weeks. Also, we do a rating system. So you can see here for the apartments, you'll see points possible. What this means is out of a scale of one to six, the score for this apartment for a modern kitchen is a score of a four. For instance, screened windows, this apartment does have screened windows, which can actually be kind of rare for Italy. So it was a score of a one. So you can go down through, see what the key features are and what you're interested in for the specific apartments and be able to see it that direction. Also, we have a feature of a map that's gonna show you the general region. So if you're interested in saying, oh, well, I'm gonna be in Montalcino, how far away is that from say Florence or Siena or Perugia? You can zoom out and be able to see a general idea of where you'll be physically located on the map. And then if you're interested in seeing the photos at once, you can go to the gallery tab and actually see all of the pictures from the apartment directly. This is a photo of Tracy here, and it just shows that all of our untours include these features. Another thing I'll mention is while you are doing the untours, we also offer samplers. So let me go back here. When you're on the page itself, and you go back say to the Tuscany page and you go, oh, well, I'm in Tuscany, but I also wanna see what it would cost to do Tuscany and Florence together because they're pretty close to each other. If you click on this tab here, it'll actually pull up the Tuscany Florence sampler. And then you have your three-step process again. So we would pick you know, two travelers. We're interested in traveling in May of next year and we're gonna go on May 10th. So you would actually select and view properties and then at this tab, you can see what options are available for Tuscany, as well as what options are available for Florence. So I'm just gonna pick the both of each one, the top one of each one. So if I choose the Copia apartment in Montalcino, and then go and pick the Terme one in Florence. What that will do is it's gonna bring a summary page up on the, on the left-hand side here. It'll show what your date of arrival is, how long you're staying, how many travelers. It'll give you an estimated cost, and you would just click reserve now. Don't be afraid to click that button because it comes to another page. And from here, you'll see that it says we will be requesting a confirmation of availability from the owners itself. So at this point, you would enter your information. And then once we hear back from the owners, you would get an email back that states, yes, these accommodations are available. And from there, we can go through and start the next steps. So you could, at this stage here, you can enter your information, who you might be traveling with, if there's any children or anything else you might wanna let us know about for the untour itself. 
when you click book on tour, then somebody like me, if you're contacting Italy, will get in touch with you to be able to start the next stages. Or if, for instance, there's an apartment that's not available, we could though then go through and pick your second or third choice that you may be interested in with the combination. So I just wanted to do a quick walkthrough of that, just so that you have a better idea of how the system works on our website because sometimes we get different people that ask and I just figured it was a good opportunity to show. So our on-site staff person, as I mentioned before, in this case, Tracy is in Tuscany and Katerina is in Umbria. They will meet you on the day of arrival and help you get settled in. They will also lead the orientation session the day after you arrive and any of your questions could be answered then. They will also be available throughout your entire stay. Another great benefit to UNTOURS is you get the car arrangements from the airport, you get a private car transfer to the auto rental pickup point. So basically you can relax when you're just getting off the flight, get into your private car, get driven to the auto rental location. And from there, then Tracy will be able to assist and you would be led convoy style from the auto rental location to your apartment directly. The on tours generally begin every Wednesday, spring through fall. So most on tours do choose to travel on the Tuesday prior to their arrival on Wednesday. Another major bonus to UNTOURS is the orientation, which occurs on Thursday following your Wednesday arrival, is a chance for Tracy or Katerina to help you make the most of your time while you're in Tuscany or Umbria. Here is where they'll explain the Italian way of life and offer suggestions on ways to spend your time in either location, from suggesting itineraries to daily trips, as well as local recommendations for restaurants or winery tours and such. Since both Tuscany and Umbria are on the driving programs, we provide you with a car during your entire stay. The beauty of a Tuscan or Umbrian road trip is that travelers can spend anywhere from a few days to a few weeks that, to explore these regions and find something new to discover and enjoy. This is why Tuscany and Umbria by car is so important and you can reach so many more uh, towns and cities by car versus trying to use a train alone. The first time this November was the first time I ever drove a, a car by myself for such a long period of time. And again, I found the, the experience completely breathtaking and I was able to discover more in those two weeks in Umbria and Tuscany than I've discovered on the last six trips to Italy. And UNTOURS also bring you closer to the local culture. It allows you to slow down and truly enjoy this Italian lifestyle. Most of our clients in Tuscany and Umbria always comment that the slower pace of life is so much more relaxing and they actually enjoy staying longer times. We have two clients coming up soon that have chosen to stay a month in each of the, the destinations. So we have a tendency to see that in Tuscany, um, we had a client just return and said, oh my gosh, I went to Tuscany. I spent one week. The only regret I have from the whole trip is why didn't I do the second week? I'm already here. Why am I not enjoying the time while I'm here? And when's the next time I'm going to be able to get back? So we always encourage everybody to look at doing two weeks. If you want to do three or more, we can set up however many weeks you want in a row. Another nice thing is with planning resources before you go, you get helpful li links, advice, local support, as well as you get support from myself. So if you need recommendations um, or any questions prior to you leave, but also once you're there, Tracy and Katerina would be available throughout the stay. So also prior to leaving, you will also receive the UNTOURS guidebook, which has been researched and written by UNTOURS staff and the local staff as well. That way you have great tips for the destinations that you'll be in. As I mentioned before, another option to travel would be through a sampler. So what a sampler is, is two or more of our Italian regions and you can combine your, your favorite destinations and it allows you to have a brighter, broader experience with a, limited, a more limited amount of time. And we also include transfers between these places. So you can sit back and relax to enjoy the regions and then the transfers are included. For instance, you could be relaxing on the, the porch of that Tuscany apartment I showed you, but then the next week you could be whisked away and uh, hanging out on the canals in Venice. The choice really is yours of how you would wanna combine it. You can also do two, three, four weeks in a row and do four on tours at once if you wanted. You would just let us know when we can go through the details with you. We've also tackled traveling in Europe during the time of COVID. We're continuously monitoring, monitoring the changing requirements for instance, just recently, Italy has now lifted that you no longer need a vaccine 
uh, I no longer need a test to be able to get in. You just need to show your vac CDC vaccine cards. So right now the CDC vaccine card and you want to bring a photo ID is required in Italy, um, but they're not being as um, strict as they were a few months ago with the restaurants, museums, and pub public transportation, because now they're, since they're showing everything as you're coming in the city, um, it makes it a lot easier when you're coming through. Uh, also, there's currently a negative test required before you come back to the US, but our on-site staff will help you be on top of relevant local information, including those testing sites to get tests before you return back to the States. Our company is also in a unique situation for those who haven't heard of Untours Foundation before. Basically, they support small progressive businesses that create jobs and support fair trade and work to alleviate poverty by providing low interest loans to businesses in the Philadelphia region, as well as across the United States and across the world. Since 1992, the Untours Foundation has loaned over $8 million and is a public charity registered as a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Anytime you travel with UNTOURS, all of the funds that come directly from your UNTOURS is funneled back into the UNTOURS Foundation. So by going on an UNTOURS, you are helping small businesses be able to get a foothold in this ever-changing climate that we have in the world. Additionally, UNTOURS support climate neutral travel. We will be 100% carbon neutral by 2023. We will offset the full carbon impact of your vacation, and we do this by supporting projects like the Wind Endery Project in India, as well as clean water projects in Kenya. So this is towards the end of my presentation, but we wanted to let you know that we are offering a special discount for anybody that attended today. So you can use this 10% off any new of the Umbria or Tuscany Untours through June 1st. So you just reach out to me. I put my contact details up here on the screen, but you can you give us a call. You can reach us out through the chat feature on our website, but you can also, as soon as we finish the presentation here, ask questions right now or reach out at a later date if you don't feel comfortable speaking up at the moment. But I also wanted to say thank you for attending today and to have happy travels when you do go to Italy. Make sure you have a gelato or two for all of us here at the office in, in Philadelphia, and we will definitely see you along the road. So I'm going to turn it back over to Brian now. That way uh, we can answer any questions that you may have about Tuscany or Umbria. Thanks, Amber. Um, and so now what we'd like to do is open it up for questions. And we've got a couple of questions already in the chat. Um, the first one, Amber, is do all hosts speak English? We do have a couple hosts that do not speak English, but we do have our on-site support and they have, um, anytime you would happen to have a question about something that's occurring in the property itself, you could reach out to Tracy or to Katerina, but also our staff, some of the properties that we have, um, they've been working us for, with us for so long that they can anticipate a lot of times what questions may be. And Tracy and Katerina provide a great handbook that will be available the entire time through your stay with the you know, sample itineraries, how to use, say, the washing machine, different things that may be irregular to each apartment. So if you ever had any questions about the properties, you can always go to the on-site staff. Okay, what about an automatic transmission car? Can, can they get one of those or do they have to do stick shift in those hilly towns? So automatic is a feature that we offer. So whenever you do sign up, we send out a trip order form, and at that point, you would provide all your details to us. And on that trip order form, there's a selection that shows what car is included in the package, and then there's a gray box with a drop down, and there would be the option of how much it would be to upgrade to, say, an automatic per, per person per day, how much the cost would be. And then if you needed to extend your car at all, there's prices for that as well. So it's very upfront. Before you choose to upgrade, you do know a, a general idea of what your costs would be. Right, but that decision is usually made after you've signed up for the UNTOUR, um, but it is an option and uh, there's an extra charge for that. Okay, any other questions? And you could, um, we, we're a small enough group. Um, if you want to just unmute yourself or wave or something and we can, we can call on you and you can unmute yourself or you can just put it in the chat. Uh, we have somebody, okay. Um, Ms. Flumiani, just a minute. We're going to first take this chat that came in. Um, are there any new 
accommodations this year for Tuscany or Umbria? Yes. So Umbria, we added an additional six or seven locations in um, a small town very close to Spoleto. Uh, if you go on the drop down for the Umbria website, you'll be able to see what those options are. But they were a new villa that I was able to vis visit in November, and the views are absolutely stunning. They have a beautiful pool. And then they also offer uh, delivery from a lot of local restaurants to the property as well. So it's a really neat location. Uh, definitely go on and take a look. Um, there's the different property. You'll be able to see which ones are on there. The properties we had before were the Ettore Upper and Lower. And then we have the Alessandra, the uh, Sarah, and the Maria. So any of the ones that are not those properties are our new ones in Umbria. Okay, so um, M. Flumiani, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Uh, it really wasn't a question, but I just want to thank Amber because she's been, <laughs> we've been emailing and I've had so many questions. This is the first time I'm using on tours. Uh, and she's been remarkable in helping me, you know, make decisions. I'm actually leaving uh, next Tuesday for Florence, Italy. Uh, and I've heard nothing but good things about on tours from a friend. And I'm totally looking forward to uh, spending two weeks in Florence and enjoying to see what you have to offer. Wow. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Thank you, Maria. Uh, for those words of praise. Uh, now we have somebody who put something in the chat. Did anybody else want to um, ask anything live? Um, you can just wave if you do. All right. Let's go to oh oh Holly. Let's let's take a question from Holly. Okay, so my question is, we, we definitely know that we'd like to stay for a week, at least, in Tuscany. We'd also like to see some of the northern areas of Italy, more towards the uh, border. So is there a particular location in the sampler that we could pair with Tuscany that would allow us some, at least some day trips towards that area? So we have uh, Florence, which is still, so the, the Tuscany on tours, the reason we call it that is that it's the region of Tuscany, but Florence itself, the town is in Tuscany region. So if you stayed in Florence, which is about an hour and a half north of Tuscany, um, then you'd be able to reach places like Pisa, Luca, you could go north to uh, Milan or Turin. Um, you could also stay somewhere like Venice. And then the nice thing is, is if you're in one of the city programs, you're very close to the train. So you're able to take day trips out. I know Maria and I were talking about her going to um, Pisa and Luca, and it's very, very close for her to go. It's only within an hour, and it's very easy to do day trips to both those locations coming from, say, Florence. Wonderful. Thank you. Sure. Okay, let's take a couple of the chat questions here. Um, oh, so Holly asked another question too. Um, if her group has a total of six people and wants to stay in Montalcino, are there multiple apartments in that town near each other? Yes. So for instance, uh, a lot of our properties are actually agriturismo. So what that means is that they have to make more than half of their profits from the sale of their product. So olive oil, wine, or such. And then from there, they have properties that they can rent out for the apartments. That allows the live working farms to not be pushed out by people that are coming in from other countries trying to buy up properties and just sell. So the agriturismos offer a lot of times multiple apartments. So for instance, the Ada Teresa, the Copia, the Familia, um, they are apartments that are all within one property that's very close to Montalcino. You have the properties like the, um, or the, or the Orfeo, the um, Donella, the Serenella, those properties are also in another. The neat thing is, is when you go under each property, in the description of the property itself, in the last line, it'll say this property is also a part of these properties. So if you want to book multiple people in the same place, for instance, the Angela and the Angela 2, those are two apartments that are in a two-story house. So you'd be able to see and say that it's actually listed in the same location. It allows them for families to basically book out the, the whole place and be able to bring a larger party without staying far apart from each other. Okay, uh, Nancy made a nice comment about her trip to Ireland with us. Thank you, Nancy, for shouting that out. Appreciate the, uh, the compliment. Um, anyone else with a question? You can wave if, you've, if, you're, uh, if you'd like to just ask it, or you can type it into the chat. 
Okay. Well, I guess that's it. Oh, we got a question from Dale. Okay. We went to Montalcino with you a number of years back. At that time, Harriet was our guide. It was a wonderful trip. She helped us get to Rome for a few days. Oh, thank you, Dale. That's nice to hear. I've heard many great things about Harriet. Unfortunately, um, I was never able to meet her, but my entire trip, I feel like every single person, every time I went to a new place, they'd say, oh yes, I got to meet Harriet back in the day and everything. So she was such a, a true cornerstone of the Tuscany program. And honestly, I don't think we would be where we are now without her. So it's great for you to, to say that, Dale. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, this is Dale. We, we, uh... I didn't realize that you would be able to help us. So I had made separate arrangements with a bed and breakfast in Rome for a couple of days, right in the middle of our, our tour at Montalcino. And uh, you're, you know, Harry had helped, not only told us how to use the trains and how to get there, but where we could go and park for free. I mean, it was uh, your folks there just handle everything. You don't have anything to worry about. And, and she left at that time, she left us with a cell phone. <laughs> She said, you know, there's still a couple hours left on this cell phone. If you need me for anything, just call. I mean, no, we have promoted your program ever since. We're, we're anxious to be able to eventually get back and do another trip. <laughs> Thanks for everything. Great, great. Thank you, Dale. Yeah, we don't include the phone anymore, as you may, may realize. That's something that we did back in the day before everybody had phones that um, work abroad. So now... Most people are just bringing their own phones along. Um, okay, any other questions or comments? Oh, Holly has another one, okay. I could probably stay on for a few hours, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I'll just ask one more and um, I'm sure that as we're booking, I'll have more and more, but so if we did one week in Tuscany and the second week we stayed in Florence, you would not necessarily have a car in Florence, I'm assuming, right? You would just have a different form of transportation to take day trips from Florence? Exactly. So the nice thing is, is that if you did Tuscany first, then when you go to leave Tuscany, we would have you go and drop the car off likely at the Florence airport. Um, the nice thing about that is you're avoiding the city. You don't have to drive into the city. And then there is very quick ways to get from, we basically would arrange for you to be picked up and taken to your apartment by a private car from the Florence airport. It's only about 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes by car. And then with the city programs, um, instead of having the car, you actually get all public mass transit included. So we give you bus tickets that are valid for the trams and the buses. And the nice thing about Florence, it's a very, very walkable city. Anywhere that you're within Florence itself, you can get anywhere within 20, 30 minutes by foot if you're walking slow, which is the best way to do it. Um, but Florence itself is very flat. It's very um, accessible, which is really nice. It's, it's one of the best accessible uh, cities in all of Italy. So there's a lot more that goes into anybody that would have, say, a walker or a wheelchair. You know, you can find places um, you can actually get discounts from the city itself as well. And if you have any questions when you're booking or after booking, you can always reach out to me. I can provide extra links, extra everything. I don't go down to the detail of booking, say, you know, restaurant reservations, but we can give recommendations, especially after you arrive and basically set you up for that type of thing. Um, but we can definitely point you in the right direction anytime that you're in that area. Um, but yeah, Florence is, is great to be able to get around by foot or by the bus. Okay. And then you would take a train if we wanted to do trips to other areas. Exactly. You'd go from the Florence Santa Maria Novella train station, which basically links anywhere from Milan all the way down to Naples. And you can jump on and off the high speed trains, which will get you places really fast for not a bad price. Or you can do more of the regional trains that you can jump on and off of if there's smaller towns you want to go to. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, with the high speed trains, um, now you can actually do a day trip to Venice if you really want to. It's I, I don't necessarily recommend it, but if you leave early and come back late, you can do that. Um, it's just a few hours. So it's it's pretty amazing how how these high speed trains have brought in a lot of new options for people. OK, I was able to go from Florence to Venice in just two hours by the high speed train when I was there this November. So I was able to leave at 
you know, 10 o'clock in the morning, I was there by lunch and was having an aperitivo with Denny up there in, in Venice uh, and had multiple aperitivos that day just because we were there so early. And that was nice because it used to take about six hours by slow train to get from Florence to Venice back in the day. Right. Okay, so Judy asks, where would you fly into to do the Umbreon tour? So we recommend you fly into Rome. And what we would do is have somebody meet you at the Rome airport by private car. And then you would actually go to the Perugia airport location to pick up the rental vehicle. So you would go by about two, two and a half hours driving in the rental car or in the uh, private car. And then once you get to Perugia, then Caterina would meet you and then drive to your property from there. All right, any other questions? Okay, well, thank you everybody for joining us. Um, you'll get a, uh, a link to a, um, uh, to a recording of this if you'd like to share it with your friends or take a look again if you feel like you missed something. Um, but otherwise, uh, we look forward to seeing you again. We've got a few other um, events coming up and you can, you'll get a list of those as well. So thanks for joining us and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you.